Okay, I'm in the process of cutting up this massive zucchino squash. I have, just from the neck alone, have cut, hold on a minute, and I will count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, off the neck, and then I have this big old kamungus part. I'm not sure whether I want to be still squash. I don't know whether I want to cut it like this way or if I want to cut it this way. I might probably try to cut it this way and then scoop the seeds out. Um, see, that's what it looks like. It's a beautiful color. Um, let me get a piece over here. See that? Isn't that pretty? But proof is in the pudding. We'll see how good it tastes when we get it cooked. Um, I don't rightly know if I'm going to cook it tonight, but by the time I get it cut up and all that, I'm going to be tired. Anyway, I'll take you along once I, uh, you know, step by step as I go. I cut that big part open, and of course I got everything all lopsided, so I had to cut it in three different pieces because I just can't cut anything straight. But I'm telling you, it smells just like a pumpkin smells. Um, so, let's see. What's the seed look like pumpkin seeds? It's almost like the texture of a pumpkin on the inside. You know, look at that. See? Anyway, I'm going to dig all these seeds out and I'm going to save them. Because you would not believe how many people's already asked me for these seeds. So, that's going to be fun, yeah. Anyway, that's that. And I will show you when I get the rest of it cut up, chunked, and and uh, peeled. I'll come back and let you know. Okay, I am trying to scrape the inside pulp stuff out, this stuff. And I'm telling you, it is not very easy to scrape out. I've been scraping it with a knife. It will not scrape with a spoon. Trust me, you're going to have to use a sharp knife to scrape it out with. Okay, also what I wanted to throw in here is that this is very hard skinned. The outside is totally just like, I can't even pierce it with my finger now. So it is that tough and that hard. Now... It is very hard to peel. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's really hard to peel. So what I did was I got me potato peeler and I put it up this way. I held it like that and then I went down with the potato peeler. Now when you peel it, see what it looks like right up under the skin? It's got these little green lines and stuff. You're gonna have to peel through that too. See? Because it's showing that there's like a thin layer all the way around. You don't want to cook that. It's kind of like eating a watermelon rind. So you don't, you don't want that part. So you're just going to have to keep peeling down until you get to, to the meat of it, to the inside. So just wanted to share that with you. Quick tip. Okay, I finished peeling it. See, there's no more of that rind stuff around it. I finished peeling it. That was a little chore in itself. But if it's good, anything that's good is worth the work that you put into it. So now I'm going to chunk it up. I finally got them cut and chunked. And I just chunked them in fairly large pieces. Not too large, but, uh, you know, not so much where they'll get mushy when they get cooked, but good and firm. So. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pan and I'm going to spray some nonstick spray in it. It's just one of them little corner dishes. And um, then, let me move the seeds out of the way. Then I'm going to take these and I am going to put some brown sugar on them. And I'm just going to eyeball it. And, uh, and then I'm going to put some butter pats of butter over the top so when it bakes the butter will bake in it you know with the brown sugar 
So as soon as I get that mixed up and put in here, I'll show you what it looks like. Oh yeah, and also the seeds. I'm just going to tell you about the seeds while I'm thinking about it. The seeds, I'm going to take these. I'm going to have to go through this mess. Yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. But um, I'm just going to have to pick the seeds out of the pulp. And then I'm going to lay them flat on um, just a flat surface like... I could put it on a board, or I could put it on another paper plate. I don't really want to use a napkin because these are they're kind of sticky, like um, like with other fruits and vegetables. Sometimes the pulp is sticky, so I don't really want to put it on a paper towel. But anyway, I'll lay it flat and let them dry. And uh, once they get good and dry, then you can put them in an envelope and save the seeds for next year or next planting season. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, so I'm trying to separate the seeds from the pulp. Not an easy thing to do with the squash. Um, if you let it sit like I did, it clumps up and it makes it easy. It's like glue. They're very hard to try to get out. And so, if you're going to save seeds, I would recommend that you try to pick the seeds out as soon as you cut, cut it open. Don't let it sit. So, I'm going to try to go through and get most of this pulp out. I'm going to have to pit, hand pick it all out. And then I'm going to set it on another plate or brown paper bag or something and let the seeds dry and well I'll show you once I get to that step okay. I have put brown sugar on them and what I did I just coated them really good with some brown sugar you may not want as much in yours or you may want more I just eyeball it maybe between a quarter and a half a cup of brown sugar I would say and then just put some pats of butter on the top and that's probably about two tablespoons of butter so again you know just to your preference if you like it more buttery or I just don't like it that buttery because then to me it, it's like greasy so I like it with a little bit of butter just to moisten it up then I took the tin foil and I sprayed the top of that too so it won't stick so just and I got my oven preheating to 350 and it's one of those emerald ovens that I'm going to put it in so what it it's preset so when I put it on bake it just presets for 30 minutes so it's going to bake for 30 minutes and it's actually preheating still but and it was 325 not 350 I'm sorry 325 so I'm just going to bake it and then maybe 20 minutes in, I'm going to check it with a fork and then just keep baking it. If I have to add 30 minutes on to it, I will. and Or add more time, not 30 minutes, but add more time to it, I will. And if not, I'll get it out earlier. And we'll see how this turns out. Okay, I'm back. Um, this is what they looked like when they came out. They had a lot of juice in them. Um, I didn't add no water or anything. They just made their own juice. I put brown sugar in, like I told you. I put probably about a about a half a cup. I should have probably just put about a quarter because they were like a little too sweet. But they were they were not bad. They were pretty pretty tasty. They just uh, they kind of reminded me of an acorn squash. So. Um, yeah, they smelt like a pumpkin when I cut it, but it doesn't taste like a pumpkin. It's a squash, and you can tell. Um, it's got a pretty good flavor. So, guys, try it out. It's the Zucchino squash. And you can get the seeds through Baker Creek at rareseeds.com. That's where I got my seeds. Okay. Y'all enjoy your day. Bye-bye.